Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot, and I got a question for you. What do you do when you have, like, the only year production model of a, a certain collectible item? What do you do? You probably try and restore it and make it real nice, don't you? Not me. I modify the snot out of it. <laughs> So, I got this uh, ATC 200 ES 1984 Big Red. Uh, it's a three-wheeler. If you're not sure what that is, I've got a couple other uh, videos about this thing already. But uh, what I have also are some Aurora lighting 2-inch uh, Cree LEDs. So these are just basically driving lights, fog lights they're called. I use these on my fishing boat and... Well, backwater fishing as well as duck hunting boat. Uh, if you want to see those in action at night, I will post up a link to that video in the description below where I made a push pull for the duck boat. They're really nice driving lights. Uh, they're just small. They're about this size, 2 inches, Cree LEDs, 40 watt total, so 10 watt LEDs a piece. Really nice and bright. Um, what I don't really appreciate about the three-wheelers are their headlights. The stock headlights from Honda, especially in the 80s, were just... Whew. can't see much of anything so my idea then was to take those Cree LEDs off of my boat and throw them onto the three-wheeler and what better way of doing that than creating some 3d printed brackets so that's what I did basically I had done this before for a friend he has the same Aurora LEDs he's actually the one that turned me on to these things so I had designed a Scotty mount one of those fishing mounts for a fishing rod holder I designed that to screw into the base of the Cree LED from Aurora. And uh, they use an inset nut into the bolt that screws onto the base, and then you can lock it into a 3D printed mount or a Scotty base mount if you have it. And then I decided to use those on the three-wheeler project. So it turns out that on the front rack, I made essentially all it is is a Scotty fishing rod holder mount, the negative portion of that, the receiver. Is just modeled into a small clamp that you use uh, three millimeter bolts that go into it to clamp together around each side of the front of the four-wheeler. Turned out really well. I printed it out in 100% PETG. This allows those headlights then to go in and I can adjust uh, not only up and down on the mount from the Aurora itself but also left and right. Seems to light up uh, pretty much anything I have on it and it seems to produce way more light than the front headlight ever did. Uh, so I was really happy with that. Does this mean it's going to drain my battery in like two seconds? <sighs> Probably. <laughs> we'll have to see. I'm sure it's just going to just gonna snap that battery down in a second, but you never know. We'll see what happens. I also modified uh, the front headlight then because what I do is I throw my auger on the handlebars out facing the front, so it ends up uh, the auger's riding essentially on the front rack, but also on the handlebars. I really like that design. I've been doing it on three-wheelers for quite a while. Um, is, I'm a taller guy, so I can see over the auger when it's in front of me. Some people that are a little shorter might have a problem with that setup. It might be a little more difficult for them to see. But for me, it hasn't been any problem uh, so far. So what I did is just rigged up a small little uh, wooden kind of I don't know how you describe it. It's like a wooden rack that allows the auger blade to rest in while the head, the heavier part, rests on the handlebars directly. So the handlebars are actually really thick, uh, kind of soft, mild steel, but on the inside actually has hardened tool steel insert for some reason. I don't know why they did it that way, but it's a real big pain to drill through. I know that. I know it's real secure. I know it's real strong. So I know that auger is not going to go anywhere on the handlebars. And then because the handlebars and the whole front fork assembly moves together it's all it does is just add a little more weight to wall when you're steering nothing uh too dramatic but when you do that your front headlight you can't see anything out of it right because your auger blades sitting right in the front headlight so because i didn't want to damage it at all i ended up just taking it out so when i took it out uh, it frees up a little bit because the way they had the 200 es series with the headlights and a lot of the 200 S's and everything, the headlights automatically on. You flip a switch to have the headlight to um, high beams, but it's always on low beams. 
So what I ended up doing was I disconnected these and I ended up just, uh, each one of these had plastic covers on each connector. So I kept them loose. So it's not a drain on the battery anymore. And it doesn't matter. That was an independent circuit. It didn't affect the rest of the wiring at all. But then you ended up, you end up with a hole in the front. So what I did is I modeled a small STL off of the perimeter of this lens and then inset it as thick as this back portion plate of the lens and I made that just a small STL. Then what I did was I made a design of what I named my three-wheeler and I call it the Noisy Narwhal. Narwhals, narwhals, swimming in the ocean. So anyway, it's a Noisy Narwhal. So what I did is I found a, a the Honda font essentially from that era put that into Fusion 360 as a just a text uh, entry. I exploded the text with a right click on the text. That turns it basically into a clickable independent, I guess, splines at that point. So then you can use the spline to make it smaller, larger, offset it, what have you. So after I did that, then I was able to uh, put offsets of about a millimeter so I could have a small lip. So I push pulled those out at different heights and then I inset a SVG of a narwhal behind that and kept that at the same height that I wanted a black filament to print. Then I did a uh, one millimeter lower was a white filament and then the base was printed red. So we ended up with a three color print which ended up turning out really really nicely. Basically all I did with that was a scripting change all with PLA. Um, different temp settings though on the white and black PLA but it still ended up melting together and working really well. The cool part about that uh, script that allowed me to do the filament change and then with the variable settings from Simplify 3D allowed me not only to change um, just the basic uh, temperature settings, it allowed me to change temperature, um, filament diameter because the other PLA was slightly smaller, as well as uh, the speed at which I wanted to print it and the layer height. So I shifted uh, 0 0.08 layer height on the white and the black. So overall, really, really nice um, way of using variable settings as well as the filament change script that I have talked about in previous videos. Again, if you're interested in the filament change uh, scripting type stuff, I will put a link down in the description below. I think it looks pretty cool. Got a little noisy narwhal plaque in there. I think I'm going to get a lot of comments to say I missed an opportunity to put an LED light behind it because this is only printed in 10% infill, so it's not a completely solid red. Um, and you're right. Probably could have did that. It probably would have looked pretty cool. But, you know, I think it looks pretty cool now. And I don't have to worry about any drain on the battery if I inadvertently leave the ignition on or something like that. I just know that there's nothing in that headlight space and good to go. So I'll have another video up talking about my design of the switch mount because I did make a mount to put all the switches, accessory switches in because there's no place or panel to put accessory switches on a Honda ATC. If that's something you're interested, maybe uh, maybe subscribe because it's coming up probably in you know 2021 when I actually finish the video. But So until then, keep your amps up and your filament dry. Oh, actually on the ice now. Uh, it's like 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Haven't caught a thing. And all the fishing reports for this body of water said it was a circus, absolute disaster. People everywhere. It's not, it's uh, I mean, guys, every whatever 50, 60 yards, if you're walking out, if you got a wheeler, you can go wherever. So, uh, I didn't know what the ice conditions were. I didn't bring the three wheeler. So, there's that. I'm going to go try another spot because uh, I suck.